I am not the Apostle Paul. I don't necessarily know if this is what Paul would say to us if he were writing to us today. And I definitely don't know if this is what God would have inspired Paul to write. But I do know that the God that we are here to worship today is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I also know that the scriptures were written for our benefit, for our hearing, for our encouragement, and for the strengthening of our faith, even today. And I also know that the truths that Paul wrote about to the people of Philippi are the same today as well. And for this reason, I'd like us to wonder, to think what it might have been like if Paul were to write a letter to Emmanuel. What sort of things would have he wrote about? What sort of things would have he talked about? What sort of things would have he pointed us to? I think it might have gone a little bit something like this. To all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Emmanuel, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of our shared focus in connecting people to Christ, growing their faith, and serving each other in love. I am confident that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to raise you from the dead. Now, brothers and sisters, I know that some of you have heard of the harsh imprisonment, persecution, and even death of our, some of our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know that they live in places that are resistant and even hostile to the gospel of Christ. I want you to know that it is for the sake of the gospel that this is happening. You see, to live is Christ because we are able to proclaim his kingdom and to gain followers for him. But to die is gain so that we may be with him and begin waiting for the day that he will return. Whatever happens to us, though, I am sure that you will stand firm in the one Holy Spirit, striving together as a united church for the mission that Christ has given to you in your place. This striving and suffering is further evidence that one day you will indeed be saved when Christ returns. Well, today, and sometimes our churches are divided over contemporary or traditional worship, democratic or republican parties, sanctuary or fellowship hall worship, Pepsi or Coke, inclusive or exclusive it is much easier to think of yourself and be divided against each other. My first words of encouragement to you are this. Do the opposite. As a body of Christ, value others above yourself. Don't look toward your own needs, wants, and desires, but look to others. In fact, look to Christ, who is the one that we all try to be like. You know that he was God, but he did not count that something to use to his own personal advantage, unlike those who use their power inappropriately today. Instead, he became the lowest man on the ladder, a servant. By taking on our human flesh, he humbled himself as so far as to die on a cross. And now God has raised him up above everything, so that whenever people hear his name, they will bow and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Be like him. And as you have obeyed and when you repent, when you do not, continue to live out your faith each and every day, knowing that God is the one who is working in you to fulfill his greater purpose. Then others will look at you and see you differently. For most do not know God and when you live like this, you will be like a star that shines and your light will point to Christ. 
Now, there are so many different brothers and sisters in Christ that I wish that you could meet. God has given them all unique gifts and abilities to help us in the work of the gospel. And they each wish that they could come and spend time with you so that you both could benefit and learn from each other what it means to live for Christ. To that point, I would give up everything I have just so that everyone would be able to know Christ through faith. Yes, everything. There is nothing that compares to the joy of being made righteous because of what Christ has done. And it is for this reason that I forget the former things. You know how I persecuted Christians and lived in open sin. I forget this so that I can pursue and obtain the goal that is the resurrection of the dead through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen closely. My second encouragement to you is this. You who are and want to be mature believers should take this same view as I do. But more than that, you should imitate me, Paul, and anyone else who lives like me. For I have heard that some of you have wondered what it means to live as a follower of our Lord Jesus. And for this reason, I have lived my life in this way, so that you would have me as an example and as a model for someone to look to. It is obvious to me that you have need of this for two reasons. I look around the world and am saddened, even to the point of tears, by the way that people live. It is though they do not know or care about our Father in heaven. I see them living like their stomachs and their bodies are their gods, seeking after pleasure, happiness, and wealth above God. Do they not know that all that will pass away? What about the way that they boast in things of which they should be ashamed of? Can they not see that the way that they are currently living will only end in destruction? That what will happen to them will be a death that lasts forever? I pray each day for these people. I mourn for them. Please join me in prayer for these people that our Lord would be merciful to them and bring them to faith. See, this is the first reason that I live like I do. For these people will certainly try to lead you away from the gospel that you have heard and you have believed. They will attempt to make you like themselves. And it is because of this that our Lord has given us to each other so that we can be examples and encouragers to one another. I thank God that I have not heard that you are acting like these people, for our true loyalty and our place of residence is in heaven. If you do find someone or anyone of your brothers and sisters acting this way, I urge you to bring them to repentance so that their sins may be forgiven. And while you used to be like those who did not know Christ, you have been made brothers and sisters to each other by faith. Now we are to walk in the ways that I have told you and I show you. For this is the other reason that I live in the way that I do. The world will continue to become more and more hostile to the faith. Yes, there are already nations where people are persecuted, as you know, but even in your own nation, things will begin to get worse. This is the second reason I live as I do, so that you may look not only to me as an example, but also to others who walk and live like me. For God knows of the trials and the struggles that you will have. So he has given you, the members of the church, his body to each other so that you can stand firm and strong together, united in faith, hope, and love. Look around you. Certainly my life is an example. But think of your brother Eric. He has given of one of his own kidneys to another person in an act of Christian love and service. He has raised godly children, loved his wife as Christ has loved the church, and now he serves you here, keeping track of your accounts. He is certainly a fellow laborer in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Look to him as one who lives as an imperfect, yet repentant and forgiven child of God. Or think of your sister, Beth. While you may not see her in front on Sunday morning or any time during the week, she is a hard worker for the sake of the church. She works diligently behind the scenes to make sure that all information is communicated and that the church continues to function. All of this while she cares for her husband and her grandchildren. Look also to her as one who lives as an imperfect, yet repentant and forgiven child of God. I ask you, who is an example of our Lord's love to you? Perhaps a family member or a friend. Think of the way that our Father has used them to set an example and to encourage you. And look to them as one who lives as an imperfect, yet repentant and forgiven child of God. Finally, when you gather to worship, look to your right, to your left, to the one in front of you and to the one behind you. These are your brothers and sisters in Christ. God has given them to you so that you may be examples and encouragers for one another. For there will certainly be times when you need them, whether in suffering or in joy. And God knows this, and he has given you to each other. And there will also be a day when Christ returns to transform our lowly bodies. And until that day, God has given us to each other to set examples and to encourage one another in love. Stand firm in this brothers and sisters, for you have a certain hope to cling to. And while buildings will fail and pass away, the word of God will never fail or pass away. And as you go on living about in this world, waiting for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, let all your prayer requests, both joys and sorrows, be made known to God, for he will certainly hear you. And that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.